So on yesterday's episode, I brought up the importance of evaluating almost before you do anything else. The talent, the younger talent that you've got inside your own system, such as it is. And later in the day, what do you know? Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Valtteri Pustinen was brought back by the Penguins management by Kyle Dubas. We can now start attaching his name to transactions. And it was done on a one-year contract, a two-way, meaning there's a different rate when he's in the NHL and a different rate when he's in the AHL. The average annual value of that is the NHL's minimum of 775. Pustin is 24 years old, and he spent all of last season with Wilkes-Barre Scranton, scoring 24 goals, adding 35 assists. This was over 72 games. So 59 points in 72 games. He wasn't, he didn't erupt the way you'd maybe hope to force management's hand, especially considering that he and Alex Nylander were the only two guys performing down there, really at any position. And another thing that would make you a little leery from the production standpoint is that if you're a power play performer, you aren't going to be of much use to this team because obviously there aren't any slots available. Unless you just come in and do what Ricard Raquel did, which is just overwhelm everybody. Don't give them a choice. And Pustin is not going to do that. Pustin also gets a lot of his own point production from setting up on a left dot and firing a one-timer. And he's not Alexander Ovechkin to be doing that. He's pretty good at it. But he's not, again, someone where you would say, wow, we have to have this guy there. So he was going to have to show a lot of different things. He was going to have to clean up some deficiencies defensively. And he didn't excite anybody. Now, is that a case of being stuck in the minors too long? Uh, Maybe wondering if he should continue his career here or go back to his native Finland. You can't know that stuff. Uh, Players do get not just homesick, but also just weary of the idea that they're banging their heads on the wall here. I, I don't mean Pittsburgh. I mean with any NHL team. And they will think a lot about going back. So for the Penguins to step up this early and make sure that they keep Pustin in, tells you something about how they feel about him. But it also says a little bit about him in the sense that he wants to keep trying it. He wants to get there. The question remains, though, how? Where does he fit? Is he just an emergency guy? Is he someone that you're keeping down there in case this player or this player or this player probably out of your top six, gets hurt. Every organization needs those. And conversely, not every organization can keep their top six as healthy as the Penguins did this past season. Which, by the way, just stick this in parentheses. Yet another insane thing about them falling short of the playoffs. Sid and Gino playing every game. And overall, the, the top six wingers, uh, even, even Jason Zucker, when he'd get hurt, would be back like two shifts later. It was just really, really impressive how those guys held up with all the pressure on them. But, you know, <laughs> been over that. Okay, end parentheses. Barring Pustin and blossoming further into some sort of a defensive stalwart, and that, that's not... Likely uh, for anybody who's not that familiar with his overall framework, this is not a big dude. He's like 
five nine, and that might be standing on the tippy toes of his skate blades. Yet somewhat of a stockier build, smooth skater, really sees the rink well. That might be his predominant trait. He can make plays. He can make plays at a very high level, and he can do it on the rush. He sees things happening. He also, no pun intended here, has a nice finish. Uh, It's not overwhelming, as I mentioned, but he'll find a way to put the puck where it needs to go. But that, what I just described, won't get you into a Mike Sullivan lineup. It just won't. It most definitely won't get you into a Sullivan lineup in the bottom six and keep you there. Unless you can magically produce, I think this would be almost out of thin air, but to produce a third scoring line. Hear me out, okay? It's that time of year. We can talk about this kind of stuff. A third scoring line in which you've got a Pustinen and Alex Nylander and uh, mm, fill in the blank, anybody but Jeff Carter. And you say, all right, we're going to give that a shot. We're going we're gonna to try putting together an impact. Uh, see, I can't. I can't. I tried it. I was about to say an impact scoring third line, and then I'd have to go over the names again, and you're going to hear that and go, that's ridiculous, because it is ridiculous. What I find exasperating, and this is just me, this is not something that I've heard come from the team or whatever, is that I look at Pustin and I really like him. I see things that he does on the rink that there might not be four or five guys on the entire organizational roster that they can do. He's really, really crafty. And you can tell from watching him that it's it's instinctive. I once had a basketball coach tell me that the worst thing you can ever do to a good point guard, good distributor, was to have them play at lower levels. The higher up that point guard would go in competition, the better that point guard would show as opposed to the other direction, which happens in a lot of positions. Why is that? Well, because he's making plays that people will understand that people will be ready for. A guy is going to know when to go to the hoop. A guy is going to know when to get open for the three or whatever. Okay. I'm not that much of a basketball guy, but I've seen that play out in professional sports. Someone who's just that good of a distributor. That's how I think of Pustin. But I still can't really relate to what that does within what Pittsburgh's got going right now. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shots brought to you by Family Table. Mom-inspired, chef-prepared meals delivered straight to your door. No prep, no mess, just reheat. That gives you more time for your family or hobbies. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com. Use the code DK40, that's DK40, for 40% off and free delivery on your first order. Order by noon Thursday for Monday delivery. Family Table, bringing families back to the dinner table. Today's J1Q comes from Nick, who asks, DK, what's the viability of building up a team from undrafted slash overlooked players, like, say, a bunch of Jonathan Marchessos? That can be a way to not just get younger now, but to also lessen or maybe eliminate that dark age that everyone's expecting after the core retires. Nick, in, instead of getting into the individual possible examples that are out there that could become another march so i'm going to first respectfully uh point out that march is so never should have been exposed by the panthers to the golden knights in that expansion draft and i know i'm not just saying that because march so just beat the panthers in the stanley cup final either uh, anybody who was watching florida play hockey at that time would know that March is so was it was a terrific terrific player never ever should have been left out there but I do see your point you're talking about 
taking a flyer on this guy or that guy who might be, let's say, younger than 25, guys who aren't necessarily getting a second contract. On the Penguins' current roster, there is such a player, and that's Ryan Paling. We're not going to think of him that way in Pittsburgh. But this was a guy who was a first-round pick for Montreal, got a hat trick in his very first NHL game. I'll bet most Penguins fans don't even know that. Go dig it up on YouTube. It's an amazing sight. Like, everyone knows Austin Matthews, four goals in his first game for the Maple Leafs. No one knows that Paling had a hat trick in his very first game. And when you see him, he doesn't look like he's missing anything. He's got the size. He's got the tenacity. Definitely got the speed. And we've seen him score some beautiful goals. Not many. But we've seen the ones that he has gotten were like, wow. If that's what you're referring to, and that's more uh, of a money ball type thing where you're scouring around the league, seeing what you can find, uh, plugging them in, giving them tryouts, telling them that this is the land of opportunity. Come to training camp. You've definitely got a chance to win a job in the bottom six here, pal. Sure. Why not? I I don't know that anybody would be opposed to that. And I've already made the case right here on this program that I feel that Kyle Dubas should very strongly consider giving Paling another shot. Now, Paling did have a lingering, possibly chronic issue that affected him health-wise throughout the season. That got to be the number one thing that you put into your evaluation, but the Penguins are better equipped to understand that, obviously, than any other organization would be right now. So yeah, you can do that. You can do that as an almost a sidetrack to what it is that you're building. But the, the one issue that I have more than any other with the question, the way you posed it, Nick, is you, you're you making it sound like it's an either-or or you're worried about what's going to happen post-SID. And I'm here to tell you that if you're worried about what's happening post-SID, you're, you're not going to like any of what's coming because they are not going to make moves that bring in young guys for the sake of post-SID. They're going to do it a lot more toward what you were actually angling for. And that's to, you know, infuse necessary youth to the roster right away. If you think about it from that standpoint, I think you'll be a lot more comfortable in general with the thing that you're actually looking for. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. 